تسلیم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله Brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Very well welcome to the second school fundraising on behalf of Madinah Masjid Alhamdulillah This is the day we've been working very hard for the last two months I mean to get together, to sit together, and to see each other on this beautiful day for the better future of our children in America. Alhamdulillah, as the program has already been in progress, this is the very first session we have. This fundraising will consist of two sessions. This is the first session, and in this session, we will go with the translate with the Holy Quran recitation, Nantir Sri Magbur, and a short speech by one of the students of Madina Masjid. And then few of our special guests, they will come and they will I mean talk to us, they will speak to the audience. And then inshallah somewhere around 7 55, 8 p.m. we will go for Salat al Maghrib. We do have a beautiful room just by the, uh, the second door from the left side. So we will have inshallah Salat al-Maghrib. And during this time, the mayor of Carrollton, Mr. Kevin Faulkner, he will be here somewhere between 7.45 to 8 p.m. We will welcome our mayor in Carrollton. And just after Salat al-Maghrib, we will come back. And our second session will start from Maghrib, inshallah, till somewhere 9 p.m., including the speech and the souvenir presentation uh, among the uh, chief guests. So without any further delay, I am honored to invite one of the very young Yusul Quran student of Madina Masjid, Hafiz Muhammad Sadi. He's 10 years old and he is in fifth grade. He is memorizing the Holy Quran in Madina Masjid. We are going to start this program with the recitation of the Holy Quran. I will request the brothers, they are standing outside, the social our meeting has finished, so please I mean, come in the hall so that we can start uh, this fundraising event. So uh, please welcome Hafiz Sadi for the recitation of the Holy Quran. <laughs>
So whenever the Quran is, is recited, we also, I mean, remember Rasulullah by presenting Nas Sharif, Qasida, Nasheed. And to take this honor, to do this honor, we have a very young, another half of the Quran, half is Taha with us. He's going to start, inshallah, presenting Nas Sharif, half is Taha. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa maulana muhammadin Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa maulana muhammadin wa ala Oh 
دل قبر کا خوف نہ رکھنا اے دل وہاں سرکار تو عالم کی زیارت ہوگی قبر کا خوف نہ رکھنا اے دل وہاں سرکار تو عالم کی زیارت ہوگی ان کو مختار بنایا ہے میرے مولا نے ان کو مختار بنایا ہے میرے مولا نے خلد میں بس وہی جا سکتا ہے جس کو حسنے نے گنانا کی اجازت ہوگی خلد میں بس وہ ہی جا سکتا ہے جس کو حسنے نے گنانا کی اجازت ہوگی جن کی غص میں میرا رب کھاتا ہے جن کی غص میں میرا رب کھاتا ہے کتنی دلکش میرے سرکار کی صورت ہوگی جن کی غص میں کتنی دلکش میرے سرکار کی صورت ہوگی نات سرکار کی پڑھتا ہوں میں نات سرکار کی پڑھتا ہوں میں بس اسی بات سے گھر میں ہوگی ایک تیرا نام وسیلہ ہے میرا ایک تیرا نام وسیلہ ہے میرا رنج و غم میں بھی اسی نام سے راحت ہوگی نات سرکار کی پڑھتا ہوں میں بس اسی بات سے گھر میں میرے رحمت ہوگی Mr. Hub presenting the beautiful Nas Sharif Now I'm going to invite the very first very young the student of Madinah Masjid uh, the daughter of uh, Brother Shreem Khan, uh, Kamal Khan, she is going to give us, inshallah, a very wonderful speech on the topic of education. Ms. Kamal Khan. Dear respectable ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum. My name is Kamal Khan and I represent the Muslim youth of America. Children across America from KG to high school spend a big chunk of their day in school and after that spend even more time doing their homework. Their parents are working hard to bring the food on the table and have no time to teach their children Islam except for a few fortunate ones. Under such 
such circumstances, our generation of Muslims direly need an institution where they can learn the modern education, as well as learn Islam to preserve the Muslim heritage. Islamic schools help students build their American and Muslim identity. Institutions play an important role in the lives of individuals and societies. An Islamic school is important because it provides Muslim children with an environment in which they can learn and live as Muslims. The homogeneity of their culture and values creates social and emotional stability, which facilitates and accelerates their learning in general areas of education, such as language, arts, science, and mathematics. They develop a strong sense of belonging to the Muslim Ummah. They not only preserve rich Islamic heritage, but contribute towards the development and progress of the Muslim Ummah in general. We all know that many public schools, despite their enormous resources and huge bureaucratic setups, miserably fail to deliver solid education, strong discipline, or good citizenship. The quality of education depends on an individual institution and its commitment to excellence. People who establish an Islamic school must ensure that their academic program is better or at least equivalent to good public schools in their neighborhood, and their staff is professionally trained and well qualified. If these two conditions are met, I am sure that Islamic school's performance can be no less than that of any good school because all the other elements of a good school are automatically present in an Islamic setting. At the end, I appeal to you. Please save our future by building an Islamic school in the community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to achieve our goal. Jazakallah and thank you. Subhanallah, very beautiful speech in a very short time. So without uh, further delay before Maghrib, yesterday we have five minutes for Maghrib. We do have very good, very, very good two honorable scholars and uh, I would say the stars of this text is one of them. On my right side is uh, Dr. Hafiz and especially our Mufti, uh, the best teacher of, I would say, in Texas, who is leading one of the best uh, Quranic and the classical uh, Islamic uh, science school and college in, in Houston at Anur. And I'm very happy and very glad to invite him because Allah Fadan Mustafa Sahib sitting on my right side. He is such a great, Alhamdulillah, one of the best alim and mufti of this era that he is teaching and alhamdulillah this is one of the uh, legacy he has been carrying that his family his father his forefathers his all family members they all are mufti and ali subhanallah we are so i mean honored to have his presence today here in dallas he, he came all the way today uh, from houston and madina Madin especially thank all these beautiful i mean people that they took their time and they understand this this is one of the best i would say the charity to i mean sit with those people who are working for the betterment of the muslim kids inshallah so i would request allah fadlan sahab all the way came from houston please come to the i mean podium and speak to this beautiful audience believe it or not i mean this is the first session we are expecting more and more people inshallah you will see inshallah just after maghrib our second session will start and mr mayor is about to come so we will welcome mr mayor as well but without any further delay i will request allah fadlan sahab please come to the podium and speak to the audience without uh, I would say please welcome him with, with all the good slogans Nare Takbir, Nare Takbir, Nare Nishar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alameen. والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون آمنت بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا وطبيبنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه دائما آبدا مباركا كثيرا كثيرا الله سبحانه وتعالى سيدنا القرآن هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون 
to those who know and those who do not know are equal. This is a significant position that was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people of knowledge. And see how clear cut line was drawn by Quran between people of knowledge and people of ignorance. The Quran says, Hal ladina ya'lamun, ladina la ya'lamun. That means this is called the istifame inkari. Question for negation means the question was asked this way like every person can say yes. The people of knowledge and the people of ignorance can never be equal. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the significance of knowledge in Quran many places. And Allah's, Allah's Messenger, Huzuri Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentioned in his holy hadith many many ahadith that he says talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim wa muslim to seek the knowledge is first and mandatory upon every single muslim whether the person is male or female and one more hadith i remember that rasul kareem alayhi salatu wasalam says that al hikmatu dalatul mu'min fa haythu ma wajadaha fa huwa ahabbu biha the word of wisdom is Dalla, is the last property of a mu'min. So wherever he finds he is more eligible or he is more deserving for that property than anyone else. So these verses and these ahadiths of Rasulullah Karim alayhi salatu wasalam was giving us clear direction that the knowledge is very important. It's the first thing in the eye of in, in the eye of Sharia and Islam, and we can see in the history of Islam and in the life of Rasulullah Karim Ali Salatu Wasalam how significant and important he was. He has given for the knowledge. Unlike other communities, unlike other religious dignities, like uh, people and leaders and pioneers of other religion, they were giving importance to like uh, leaders, lineage, wealth, hasab, nasab and other things. But Rasulullah Kareem alayhi salatu wasalam gave importance to knowledge rather than anything else. That's why he announced amongst all his followers that he said, لِيَلِ يَنَّنِي مِنْكُمْ أُولُ الْأَحْلَامِ وَالْنُحَا let those people, let the people of knowledge and let the people of wisdom come be closer to me. And that's why he made his, his, he made his cabinet containing the people of knowledge. And you know the people like Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu, Umar Farooq radiallahu, Sayyidina Ali Murtaza radiallahu, Sayyidina Muaz ibn Jabal, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Masood. People of like, people like this, the people of knowledge and wisdom, were closer to Rasulullah Karim alayhi salatu wasalam rather than those who are rich, rather than those who are dignities in any other backgrounds. So that's the reason, the time, the era, the other societies have banned the knowledge. The knowledge was considered to be a property of certain people and it was dominated by certain people. In especially in Europe, you know, the time Islam started the revolution by by knowledge was the time when the Western countries, when Europe and America, America was not part of the history that time. The all Europe was considered to be in the dark ages, and the Europe and these Western countries they got this point that the education as the key to success, almost 800 years after the revolution of Islam of the education. So now you know the every the, this became a universal truth. Everybody understand this. No one can deny the education's importance. No one can deny. It. No one can refuse. Now, but it took almost 1000 years to come to this position. And you know, Islam, it was 
that first day, the first day when Quran introduced and the first ayat came and everybody knows the first, very first verse revealed to Rasulullah Karim was Iqra. Iqra, you know, Iqra means read. So the first hukm that comes by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Rasulullah Karim was Iqra is giving the hukm and command to read. Rather than before saying believe, rather than before saying practice, rather than before saying work, work hard, the first ever word said by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the leader of Islam, to the leader of believers was only read. I do not find any, any history or any religion saying this much significance, giving this much significance to the education. And let me tell you one thing, the final thing, because I don't have that much enough time. People remember the history of the Battle of Badr. And every person understands that part that when 70 people from the enemy side was arrested, they detained, they were captured. 70 people from the enemies were captured by Muslims. And you know when it was decided by Rasulullah Karim Ali Salatu Wasalam to how to set them free and it was decided to let them pay the ransom, let them pay something and so that he, they can get freedom. But after that, you know what Rasulullah Karim Ali Salatu Wasalam said about those people, not every single capture and came to was having enough money or enough, enough thing to pay as a ransom and to be released. But you know, it is part of history of Islam and I don't think any history can have an example of like that. That Rasul Karim Ali Salatu Rasul established and he declared that those people, those poor who are captives and they cannot pay anything as a ransom and they want to be released, the option for them is that let our people those who do not know how to read and write, train them how to read and write. Train them how to read and write. And this unique thing will be their ransom and they will be released. And I do not find any example of this beautiful punishment. I can say beautiful punishment. Such a beautiful punishment that Rasulullah Karim is appointing the, the people captives from the enemy side as a teacher of his community. As a teacher of his community, see how education, education is started in the Muslim community. But today, everybody understands the importance of education. So, again, that word that Rasulullah Karim Ali Salatu Wasalam said, Al Hikmatu Dalatul Mumin. Fahaytuma Bajadaha Fahua Ahkobia. Without any differentiating between this and that, between this community and that community, this country and that country, this caste and this clan and that clan without any difference, without any discrimination. Rasulullah Karim Ali Salatu Wasalam said, see the word of wisdom is your property. The word of wisdom is your property. The word of wisdom is the property of Muslims and believers. And that's why, you know, Rasulullah Karim Ali Salatu Wasalam said, نَحْنُ مَعْشَرُ الْنَبِيَا لَا نَرِسُ وَلَا نُرَسْ مَا تَرَكْنَا سَلْقَ إِنَّمَا وَرَّثُوا you know what is the inheritance of Ambiya Kiram? Only knowledge. Not dirham, not dinar. That's why Rasulullah Karim Ali Salatu Wasalam said the people of knowledge are the heirs of Ambiya Kiram. People of knowledge are warisin of Ambiya Kiram. So see, that's why he said Muslims should believe that the word of wisdom is their own property. So today we are here to work for education, Alhamdulillah. And you know what, the last thing I want to say, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran, ta'awanu ala birri wa taqwa wa la ta'awanu ala ismi wa taqwa. Do help each other on the matter of righteousness and taqwa and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa la ta'awanu ala ismi wa taqwa and do not help anyone and do not help each other on the act of sin and the act of translation. You know, when Allama Baba Rahmani Sahib is your leader, when he is in front, so that is not a matter of doubt. 
Just follow him. It's very hard to say, follow anyone blindly. But you know, the person like Allama Baba Hamani is in front and he is a leading, he is leading person. Easy to say that follow him. Follow him blindly because whatever steps he takes will be definitely something important. Because it is his steps matters. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him success of today's gathering. What a beautiful speech. And uh, during his speech, uh, our mayor, mayor of Carrollton, Mr. Kevin Faulkner is here. We welcome you, sir. Uh, Mr. Z is here. Mr. Sulman Hashmi Sab is here. Uh, uh, attorney Adam Malik is here. Dr. Sulman uh, uh, Hassan Hashmi Sab is here. And then Abin Malik Sab is here. Ulam Hayes. Everybody is here. Why we just I mean, I mean waiting for this I mean, occasion? We were just waiting for Salat al Maghrib. Now, this is time of Salat al Maghrib. We are heading towards the hall to offer Salat al Maghrib. The second session will start just after Salat al Maghrib. And then we will invite each and every guest on the stage. They will take their chair, inshallah. And the second session will start. So, without any further delay, please stand up. The prayer room is ready. The prayer is, room is ready. Please, I mean, take a seat, inshallah. There might be two or three jamaat, but again, go ahead and offer Salat al Maghrib. During this time, we will definitely be, I mean, it, it will be silent for five or ten minutes, inshallah. We will come back and we will resume the second session. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you very much. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المقطوب عليهم ولا This is actually the older uh, master plan site. Um, you'll notice it does say two-story school on it, but that was the original concept. We have since developed this as a three-story school and, and changed the site a little bit. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get the new site into the PDO presentation. Uh, but the, the basic elements, um, the basic elements we're coming into, uh, where the medical clinic and institute of higher education are going. We actually have a banquet hall and a medical clinic and a funeral home coming in um, along that area in the new plan. Uh, entry into the building, we're creating a, a covered portiche area. This area could also serve as uh, an out area for the outdoor prayer. Um, but it, it also serves for student drop-off and uh, secured uh, secured lobby uh, entrance so that, that everybody's coming into the school is going to pass through a security zone before they can come in. Uh, the gym is on the left. The gym is also going to be a storm shelter. So it'll be tornado rated storm shelter. And it's also serving as your community center. It will have a, a full separate kitchen from the school. So the school will have its own kitchen the gym will have a kitchen. Uh, also, we have oriented the material patterning and the concrete patterning to 43 degrees off of north on the Kibla compass. Uh, first floor plan, uh, we do have, we come in uh, on the left side here, we're coming in at the entry, secured foyer area, reception, greeting. Uh, we then, you then have uh, access to go vertically, uh, either by stairs or by the elevators. Core um, and administration is in the front, so everybody comes through. A, uh, so um, everybody is going to be coming through a secure checkpoint to get into the school. The 
the secondary exit stair would be an exit only, so this uh, this feature would only be able to be open or accessed from the outside as you planned it or if you were having a special event to secure it. But otherwise, this is an exit only for fire escape purposes. Um, we do have the, the cafeteria area, which will have glass on um, both east and north side um, with the kitchen and the services at the back. Um, so this will give a nice public view and again, orienting the materials on 43 degrees. Uh, then going to the second floor, we'll have the library, um, science classroom. Uh, I believe we are starting with, um, with fourth through seventh grade on the second floor. Uh, Close-up elevations and some of the perspectives of the buildings. Um, again, we're looking at doing uh, three tones of brick. Um, a burgundy, a dark brown, and a, uh, a light tan brick. These colors are prevalent throughout um, that particular area or this particular area of Carrollton. Uh, so we feel we're, we're achieving a, a blending in relation to the community through the color of the building, but we're also expressing a contemporary design uh, moving into the future. And. Uh, the rest of these slides are just other different images. This would be the back elevation, um, west side. So every elevation is, is treated architecturally. Uh, so you don't just have a back of house building that's plain and, and, and uh, everything, everything your approach, you'll be able to pass the building on the back side and you don't feel like you're driving around the back of the building. Um, I think the next slide starts to move into the gym. These are just uh, close-up elevations. So I'm go to the next one. Okay, the, the gym and community center floor plan. Uh, the area in red around the around the gym floor plan. This will be constructed as tornado resistant. So this will be this will be your community uh, shelter for uh, you know bad wind storms or tornado coming through the area. Uh, chairs so that everybody can be by uh, Dr. Zakani, uh, Dr. Zakani Sahab, Adan Sahab, Balam uh, Jangra Sahab, uh, Attorney Harun Afmi Sahab, Ashwag Ahmed Sahab. Let me see how many we can pick up. Uh, all of all of you, Alhamdulillah, are here just to I mean, uh, bless this gathering. But again, yeah, this is one of the wonderful Balam Jangra Sahab. This is one of the great gathering. Alhamdulillah, Dr. Navi Sahab is sitting with us. Uh, we will just I mean, request all of you, please, I mean, uh, uh, Andrew Ibrahim Sahab, Salman Tawani Sahab, if I miss someone, please, I mean, raise your hand. Uh, everybody can be here. Uh, Inshallah, Rahman, we will just, I mean, close very, we are very close to, I mean, uh, do this ceremony. So the very first, uh, some of some of us, well, I mean, you can come here, some of us here. Uh, we can, everybody standing over here. We can just, I mean, balance both sides. <laughs> Okay, the very first, I mean, uh, I mean award, uh, I would say the leadership award on behalf of uh, the community, Muslim community of uh, Carrollton, especially Carrollton and Dallas area, is uh, going to be presented to the mayor of Carrollton, Mr. Kevin Fagner, and our request, Dr. Hassan Hashmi Sahib is standing with us. Please, I mean, go ahead, sir, and then Mr. Mayor. Please, sir. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And the second uh, thing with us, and before we start the session, I'm always, always, I mean, look for uh, Attorney Harun Hashmi. He's with us, and what a beautiful. A melodious voice he has. I will request him if he can read the U.S. National Anthem, sir. Please. Attorney Harun Ashmi. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here today. I'd ask if we could all rise for the National Anthem.
In real estate, it's always about location, location, location. But in real life, it's education, education, education. And your primary education is just as important as your secondary education. Now, I have known Mr. Baba Rehmani since the first day he got here. And we've been friends for a very long time. So there really are no filters between us. We can say anything to each other. So I was at his home one time, and I looked at a rough draft, you know, kind of ideas written on a piece of paper about this massive project that he's doing. And I told him, I go, you're building a three-story school, a funeral home, a banquet hall, a medical plaza, blah, blah, blah. Don't you think that your goals are lofty, that you have really high goals? And do you know what he said? Now, listen very carefully to what Mr. Baba Rehmani told me at that time. He came to me and he said, have you ever shot an arrow long distance? And I said, no, not recently, I haven't done that. And he said, when you aim for a target, what do you want to hit? And I said, I want to hit the bullseye. And he said, right, everybody wants to hit the bullseye. So he told me, now this is him talking, he said, but when I aim for the target, I'm going to aim a little bit higher. And in that distance, the arrow will come down and hit the bullseye. That's a smart guy right there, mashallah. At the University of Texas at Dallas, we are celebrating our 50th year this June. Can I get a woohoo? See, but my students, I love it when they do uh, audience participation. And loud snoring doesn't count. And so at, the, at UTD, we are celebrating our 50th year. In 1969, UTD started with only two buildings and 20 students. That's it. That was 50 years ago. And now, 50 years later, we have almost 50 buildings and 50,000 enrolled students just this year. Now the majority of us are not going to live 50 more years. It's just a fact of life. We're not going to live 50 more years. 
but your children and your children's children are going to be living 50 more years. And one of them, 50 years from now, will be up here on stage thanking all of you to be the founding fathers of this massive project. So I thank you for your time, and I thank Mr. Baba Rahmani for allowing me to speak to you. God bless you. Dr. Zubair Fatani, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So I would just, I mean, keep going because we have so many good, I mean, faces in front of you. Next, my speaker, one of my very, I mean, good friend, a very, I would say, honorable friend of this area again, Dr. Naveed Saab. He's also been with, he's also with us. I would request Dr. Naveed. To know, to be aware, to perceive, and to learn, which is used to denote knowledge being sought are imparted through instructions and teachings. So this is, in other words, any knowledge that is gained is talim. The other step towards education in Islam is the biya. So which means to increase, to grow in the state of spiritual and ethical nurturing in accordance with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is basically growing yourself, nurturing yourself with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third thing is adab, which means to be cultured, redefined, and well-mannered. So it suggests person's development of sound social behavior. So these are the three steps. Now when we look into any education institution, we can get education, that is Talim, the first part, where there's more like a secular education, you know. But we need to look into the other two, two part of the education, which Islam stresses, and those are tarbiya and those are ada and they are very important for a community for a muslim community to survive and thrive so where we can get those the best part are the islamic schools now the last part i'm going to talk about a little bit some statistics that i got about the islamic schools there are close 4.5 to 5 million muslims these are estimates in the united states out of those, almost 30% uh, or so are the children. So those 30%, we have close to 230 Islamic institutions where, you know, from kindergarten to all the way to high school, uh, the students can go. So they are close to 30,000 registered students, Muslim students in these Islamic institutions. Now, at the same time, let's discuss another minority here in the United States. We have kind of close to equal population to the Jewish community. There are about 5, 5.3 million in the United States. So there are close to uh, 861 Jewish schools in the United States. There are close to 230,000 Jewish students registered in these schools. So our population is about the same. But the number of schools, Islamic schools that we have, far, far less as compared to a similar minority that we have in, uh, here in the United States. So, you know, I think we all, as a community, have to come forward. We all have to work on this, where we can take this to the next step. And we are really thankful and we appreciate uh, respected Baba Rahmani that, you know, he took this initiative and this beautiful, uh, uh, the project that we just saw, you know, he uh, put there forward and hopefully one day this will be a reality where our children will start going and getting educated. Where we can teach and train them not only on the Talim part, but also Tarbiya and Ada. Now, one last thing I want to say here is, you know, there's some problems as a community. It's not only the Muslim community, as a whole community in the United States, the people are extremely busy. And same is true with the Muslim parents as well. So my, the point I'm trying to make here is that, you know, we do not get enough interaction in our own homes with our children. Because a lot of them are out working all day long and we don't have that time that we can interact and train and teach our children at home. This is one problem. And then at the same time, many parents like us, we are not actually well versed and we do not have that knowledge that we can impart to our children, to the next generation. So again, we are end up, we, we end up 
that we need more institutions, we need more Islamic institutions where we can have freely our children grow and get their talim, tarbiyah, and adab. So thank you very much and appreciate and I hope and I pray, inshallah, this is going to be a very successful project. Thank you. Thank you. Naksha, thank you very much. Well, you know, it is said, the shorter the better. A friend of mine, you know, he was, I mean, in December, when we paid off the land, you know, I, we were in the mosque and then there were hundreds of people and then I asked him, you know, please come for a second or for a minute to say something. Look at the guys, you know, they, he came all the way from the back, he took the mic and Mr. May, he said, God bless you. <laughs> so, inshallah, since we have so many speakers, I would request you, please, I mean, just, I mean, try to be either three minutes or less than three minutes because we have to start the fundraising. Now, without any further delay, I'm going to request your brother, uh, Salman Tawani, one of the very successful businessmen of this area, Dr. Mr. Salman Tawani, the real estate broker, and one of the very first, I would say, uh, the uh, donor, and one of the very first, I mean, the family, you know, we've been together, and uh, we are so, I mean, honored to have today, Mr. Salman Tawani. I'm not going to take much time, as Bhavar and Bhai said, shorter the better. So, uh, next, uh, distinguished uh, Mayor Wagner, uh, Dr. Hashmi, Suleiman Hashmi, and other distinguished guest community members, Assalamu Alaikum. As you all are aware, what is the reason why we are gathered here today? I'm going to not give you any speeches. Dr. Fatani and other people have covered a lot of stuff, and more is going to be covered as other uh, speakers are going to come. My, er, I'm just going to re humbly request, do your best. This is uh, something that you guys are investing into your future, your kids' future. This is going to go for generations. It's just a Kajaria. It's 100% tax deductible, so you can take tax deductions and do the best you can. Uh, with that, I'm going to thank the uh, Babarbai for all his efforts, for doing what he's doing, and the entire team and the ma management of Medina Mazid. Thank you. Allah. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So now we thank you very much. This is again, the shorter is better. I'm going to request now uh, one of very, I would say, very famous attorney uh, in Dallas area. Uh, we met today first time, but you always listen uh, his program, or his name, you know, on the radio. Uh, we are honored to have attorney Adam Malik today. So we request you please come and please, I mean, I mean talk to the audience, attorney Adam Malik. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Armani, and thank you uh, for uh, inviting me here. Uh, I am honored to speak to this gathering today, and uh, before I begin, I want to thank you, this uh, distinguished guest, uh, the Honorable uh, Mayor of the City of Carrollton, uh, Mr. Faulkner. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, it is very important for any community to have a sound foundation before it can thrive. And one of the important factors in having a sound foundation is to have uh, its community well educated. And, and, and as so many of other uh, of our guests have already spoken, education is very important uh, for any community to thrive. And especially our religion uh, teaches us how important it is uh, to focus on education. Having said that, there, there were other uh, guests who spoke about the importance of education within our religion, so I'm not going to go over that. But it is very important for us to learn from each other, and it is very important to make sure that our kids learn uh, from what we have learned and what history has taught us, amongst uh, other things, before you can thrive in the field that you want to, to be in. And Obviously, the, the, the first step to do that is to get a good education at, at a school, a university, or a college level. You start with your home, and then you start your education at a school. And this is a perfect opportunity to make that happen for this community and for all of our children. So I would ask everybody to look into this and do what, the best that you can to support your community and support everybody that's part of this community. Thank you very much for having me, and I really appreciate uh, coming here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Attorney Adam 
Mariya Gary, we are so honored to have these, you know, good, I mean, wonderful gentlemen. And I'm just I mean, trying to see, you know, who is the next one. So I would request Dr. Wasim. So, so, so many doctors we have, and, and I'm, I'm glad, you know, to have all these, you know, uh, intellectuals with us who are the, the best, I would say, the friend of this project, Dr. Wasim. Uh, honorable uh, Mayor, uh, respected guest, and honorable Gurmayakram and respected uh, community members. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace be upon you. Uh, given this opportunity, uh, first uh, thing that I want to do is acknowledge the efforts that placed by Baba Rahmani, Shweb, Sahab, and all other uh, members uh, at Medina Masjid. I feel very fortunate that I am not only just the witness, but also able to contribute into something very extraordinary that we have to build a very important aspect of community services. Uh, everybody has been talking about education. I uh, just want to point out something, being a psychiatrist, uh, when we really look at ourselves, uh, there is nothing, no action ever we are able to take unless we get a thought. So the, this education process, education system that we have, uh, and the education doesn't just start while we are in school, the education starts when we are born in the lap of our mother. It starts right there. It, it never ends until we die. So this process, when this thinking, particularly aspect, is built on the grounds of deen, then we have really actually both aspects, the world, as well as the life that we spend, the way that we spend, the things that we do, every single thing that we do on the grounds of the righteousness, on the grounds of right things. So when we build that right in our, in, in our children, right from the beginning, the life is much better. The mental health diseases are far away. Uh, they have a better prosperous life uh, altogether. So I'm very thankful to Barbara Rahmani for this opportunity to say that, uh, along with the community efforts that uh, the team really places, and uh, particularly our uh, Imams up here, uh, we have always uh, find him to be a very charismatic, uh, very uh, humble and very respectful uh, person who prays to everybody. I'm pretty sure that with this team, uh, there would be an institute here uh, that going to build the life uh, in, with the state of well-being. So thank you so much for everybody for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Sim. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So next speaker is uh, Brother Anjum Ibrahim. And everybody knows in Dallas area, he's one of the very prominent figures of Dallas area, Brother Anjum Ibrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I am really honored, Borbai, uh, for giving me this opportunity to say something in, uh, in front of such respected guests. And I invite you all to this uh, program tonight. Uh, we're keeping it very short. Prophet Sallallahu said, education is a must from the cradle to the grave, number one. Number two, you know, the first Islamic school, where was it? It was just a Chabutra, a platform in Madina Sharif. And that school is called the, the people of the bench. The students were called the people of the bench. We are glad Alama Babar Rahmani and his team gave us the first masjid in Carrollton. Can we have a round of applause for that? <laughs> now, inshallah, we are going for the first Islamic school in Carrollton. And these guys deserve a big round of applause for that too. Please. <laughs> All I would say, do your best. Don't look at the quantity of people we are. Look at the quality. We can do amazing things if we just stand together, be together. We are sure we have come so far, and inshallah we'll get to there, get to where we are aiming to go, and inshallah we'll get there soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Ibrahim. So our next guest speaker is Dr. Ghulam uh, Zarkani. He came all the way from Houston, Dr. Stop. Thank you very much, Dr. Ghulam Zarkani. نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين It is a great pleasure for me 
to have myself here in this gathering for a noble cause and for the future of our new generation. There is no doubt education is the key for the success here in this world and hereafter as well. We migrated from different countries and came here to have a better life for ourselves and for our generation. I think this country gave us a lot. We are supposed to think how we can give to this country. And I think if we give best education to our generation, this is a sign that we are giving back to this country for what we are coming here. I support to the management of uh, Kalantar Masjid and the team member of the school and I am 100% confident that the leadership that is in front of you, Allama Baba Rahmani and his uh, committee members, they are very active, they are very energetic, they are very serious and honest. So we must show our trust in them and support them. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I'm glad Dr. Zarkani sir mentioned, you know, besides me, my committee members, board members, otherwise everybody was mentioning my name and I was not in a good situation because I have to go back to my mosque and these team members, all my team members, they all are my team members, alhamdulillah, we all are working very hard. These doctors, these physicians, these intellectuals, these, I mean, all you know, good people, they all are our team members and we are so, I mean, honored to have. So without any further delay, I'm going to request uh, from my, I think, I have three more speakers. I will request uh, before uh, Mr. Sulman Hashmi, sir. Sir, please, Mr. Sulman Hashmi. The son of Dr. Hassan Ashmi, you see him every time, and we are glad to him today. First of all, I uh, thank, thank you everyone, thank you, the Muzzid leadership team. First of all, I wanted to say a congratulations to everyone is, who's in this room and to the Muzzid team leadership. You know, when ba in, uh, a respected Baba Rahmani Saab and the Muzzid leadership team said that they're going to buy 10 acres of land and it's going to be over a million dollars. We all thought that it was a goal that couldn't be achieved by the, you know, the small masjid that it used to be at that time. But it's a congratulatory moment that that is now paid off, and now we're on the next phase. So first of all, I'd like to say that as a major congratulations to the community and to the leadership. Second of all, I'd like to say on education, we all believe in it. I think it's ingrained into our culture into our religion. You've heard all the anecdotes of how our religion expresses it, but the fact is, in any Ivy League university, in any university across America, you see an MSA, a Muslim Student Association. So people are representing our religion in educational facilities. What this does is it just furthers that goal and starts it at an initial phase. So it's an important aspect that needs to be followed, and the community is there to follow through with it. The last thing I'd like to actually say is that, you know, there's a hadith out there, there's sayings out there, that you don't know what good deed will get recognized. Some of us may not be praying all the five, five prayers, we may have missed a prayer, we may not be focused all the time in, in the masjid, we may not be the, doing all the things that are part of our five pillars, but we may say that, oh, you know, this goal, this is not a part of me, it's a part of someone else will do it. But really, it, you don't know what goal will be recognized by Allah. You don't know what good deed will be recognized by Allah. So whether it is giving $1, $10, whatever you can do, I really encourage everyone to donate because you don't know if that's the good deed that will get recognized. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Just one thing. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Our next guest speaker is, I would say he's also one of the the founder of this Muslim community in Dallas, he landed in this town in 1970 and look at how much, you know, the progress, you know, we have, we have achieved in his leadership. I'm very honored to have uh, Mr. Ulam Hussain Jangasa with us 
you listen to him, you see him every day, you are honored to have him, and he will have to come to you. It's all I'm saying, Anderson. Bismillah, thank you. I don't know where to start, but just to say this, thank Allah SWT for all the blessings. Two weeks ago, I heard a sermon our Imams have said, those who live for themselves, when they die, they're gone, the name is gone, and everything is history. But those who live for others, they live forever. You know so many of them, all Lord Buzzer Gandhi, you still remember them. They were not rich, but they were for other people. So just remember this, and then I'll go from here. But 20 plus years ago, I was visiting my family back home in Karachi, Pakistan. There's a masjid very next to it, so I went for the Friday prayers. And I saw a young man, very energetic, very quick. He was giving a Friday sermon. So I asked my brother, who is this guy? And when I met him, I found out he was a very young, he's still a scholar. When I found out he's about his education, he was already MA. So I reached him and I said, Sir, would you like to come to the USA? He very politely said, Maybe, maybe not. So when he landed in the United States, I said one night to the Carrollton community, Sir, there's not a single mosque in Carrollton. We need a masjid. We got all the ingredients of the masjid. We have the place where we pray and to. We have community, we have folks. Then he goes after this process. And look, today we have a Medina Masjid. And then I say this much. Today, Carrollton does not have an Islamic education school where our children can grow in an Islamic environment and be productive students, productive citizen, and a good citizen. In Garland and Richardson, whenever we saw Islamic school, the, so many professions moved in with the children. And the property value went up, sir. The uh, schools are good, kids are good. My three children went to Islamic school, and Alhamdulillah, they're all a professional. So I say this to you tonight. That gentleman was Mr. Baba Naimani. And then when I went and attended some of these meetings while we are having this fundraiser. They worked so hard for this. And I saw the committee member, Shoaib Khan, Haji Qasim, Mushtaq Bhai, Bashir Nawiyala, they are all on one path. They all get together so nicely. The team is there. The problem in so many associations, we got so many people going against each other. They all are together and they have a good leader. This is a very good ingredient to get anything you want. So I think this project, whether it is a two million dollars or three million dollars, with your help, inshallah, these folks can do it. I hope you give comfortably and you do as much as you can tonight and in the month of Ramadan, but do not hesitate. This is very important for our future. May Allah SWT grant you. So I say this gentleman, Mr. Mayor Kevin Faulkner, I read his history. From their very childhood, he's been serving community. He will be here and he'll be here when he's gone. Baba Rehmani will be here. All of these folks, they have served the humanity. To me, they are the best among us. Thank you very much and do the best you can, inshallah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Wonderful speech. And before our, the last two chief guests, I mean, they come to you, I have a very honorable uh, guest uh, in this community, Mr. Z. Bugatti. Uh, everybody knows him, and we are honored to have him. Mr. Z. Bugatti, please let me welcome Mr. Z. Assalamualaikum, and thank you so much for inviting me this evening. Uh, I'm sure you heard from all of our wonderful guests this evening, we're here for one reason, and it's raising the money for this wonderful uh, school ahead of us. So without any further delay, I would like to present a check on behalf of Mr. Javed Anwar, who's a good friend of ours, a $50,000 to start the evening, please. Now it's up to you all to start. It's not how little or how big the contribution is, just do it from the heart, and I promise this will have many more rewards that you can see it now, here, and afterward, inshallah. Salam. So, Alan, on the shorter, the better. Thank you very much. Okay, now, so, 
The wedding time is over. We do have our last two I mean, chief guests and Mr. Dr. Hassan Hashmi Sahab. Everybody knows Dr. Hassan Hashmi Sahab. He's just like a father of this community. I'm not going to take too long. Again, I'm going to request you please welcome Dr. Hassan Hashmi Sahab the best way we can do. Please welcome Dr. Hassan Hashmi Sahab. Thank you very much. I remember the first day I came to the masjid in Carrollton. <clears throat> And I'm proud to have been there the first time and very proud to continue coming there. Um, the fact is that uh, the united group of the administration, Mr. Babur Rahmani and all the other members, and I will not name everyone because there are quite a few, and they have done a phenomenal amount of work to put things together practically. It is one thing having ideas and thinking about projects. It's something else making them into reality. To make educational pro ideas a reality within a lifetime is not an easy thing. They have done it in a very short period of time and they are the ones who deserve a lot of credit for doing this and for being able to sow the seed of the beginning of what might be later on the major Islamic university in this town. So think big as Mr. Baba Rahmani did. And think bigger at this point in time. So as we work towards the beginning of this school, I think it is extremely important that we do that way. There is only one thing that I would say beyond that is there is great school systems that exist in the United States and I congratulate the mayor for having a great school system here. But what is the importance of faith-based schools? There is great importance to that. You, we talked about Jewish schools, we talked about Christian Catholic schools. I met myself in my earlier education went to an Adventist school, then a Catholic school, and then an Air Force school, and so on and so forth. The advantage of having faith-based schools is it is an expression of the passionate desires and focused elements that make up the character of a human being. And if you look at what we want this school to do is in this great country of the United States of America be able to express the basic tenets of our religion. The basic tenets of our religion to be peaceful community leaders who provide the infrastructure for the development of all of our community, not just focus on people of our religion. We, Islam has always been very accepting of people from all religions. The medical clinic program that you see is going to be open to everybody. It is not going to check whether you are a Muslim or not. It is for our communities based on the basic tenets of Islam to help people, to be there for them when they need us, to be able to provide the care, the education, and all the things that they need. The Tornado Center, as was described, is not just for Muslims, it is for everybody. And we appreciate the fact that this great country offers us the ability to provide those services and become the community leaders and become the leaders of the society that exists in the United States. And I feel very proud to be a U.S. citizen and a patriotic Muslim U.S. citizen here in this place. Uh, and I want to thank Mr. Kevin Faulkner, our Mayor of Carrollton, for being here today because this recognizes the fact that the political leadership of this town is accepting of what we are doing and is appreciative of what we are doing. So thank you very much, Mayor. And thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you very much. What a wonderful I mean, session going on. So, we are so honored to have all these guests. I know that, I mean, all of you definitely are waiting for Mr. Mayor, and now this is the time uh, to introduce Mr. Mayor. And I do have one of very young, energetic speaker in our community, Mr. Ayan Angora, and he took the honor of I mean, introducing Mr. Mayor, Mr. Ayan Angora. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, brothers and sisters both. It is my privilege tonight to introduce our keynote speaker, the mayor for the city of Carrollton, Mr. Kevin Faulkner. 
Mr. Faulkner is a native of Dallas, Texas, and went to school at Texas Tech University. If you guys don't follow college basketball, they're pretty big right now. Final four. You guys are winning by three points. Keep it up, second half. Um, Mr. Faulkner graduated from that school with a Bachelor's of Architecture in 1985 and a Master's in Business Administration in 1988. He is both an accomplished businessman and an architect. He has called Carrollton home since 1990. In fact, he has raised his three daughters there and his beautiful wife, Susan, of 34 years. He has a grandson as well, and he has been deeply devoted to the community since he has moved to Carrollton, has held multiple positions on various boards and committees for the city. This includes the Construction Advisory and Appeals Board, Planning and Zoning Commission, Capital Improvements Plan Advisory Committee, and Chair for the Property Standards Board. Needless to say, he has given back to his community multiple folds and has dedicated his life as a public servant. He is a supporter of the Islamic School for the, Kis for the uh, Medina Masjid of Carrollton. Everyone, please join me in welcoming our mayor of the city of Carrollton, Mr. Kevin Faulkner. Thank you so much for that uh, wonderful introduction. I'm humbled to be here this evening. The distinguished guest up here on this podium. Um, I, uh, it, it, so much intelligence here and so many great speakers, so um, it, it is humbling for me. This is uh, a special honor for me because uh, your uh, community has been so welcoming uh, to me and to my family and to our, uh, the broader community. Uh, I can't tell you how much that means to us, and uh, it uh, continues to be so. Thank you so much to Mr. Baba Romani and to the entire team for everything that you are doing. And it is true uh, that just as Dr. Hashmi said, uh, the execution is the, the hard part. Ideas are easy. Uh, execution is difficult. We have lots of people with ideas, uh, not as many who want to execute. So thank you very much for that. We. Uh, I appreciate uh, the Islamic and the Muslim community so much uh, here in Carrollton. It's a very important part of our uh, community fabric. We, um, I too uh, am a man of faith, so I hold that um, in common with you, and I appreciate uh, what faith means uh, to your life and uh, to how you, how you go about your life. And so thank you for uh, your commitment to your faith. We. Uh, Education is important to me, and um, I am extremely excited, and I remember when I first heard about the uh, school project a few years ago, um, and the anticipation for that, because we are um, excited to have an educational facility of this sort uh, right here in the heart of Carrollton. We, uh, we are committed in Carrollton to our education of our children, because education is of our children is the future of our country and our world, and uh, it is something that we have to take for um, the importance that it is. You know, um, Nelson Mandela said that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world, and I believe that 100%. It is extremely powerful and used. Uh, it is something that we need to not take for granted. We, uh, with education, we are able to instill confidence in our young people that is uh, unlike others um, that we can do. Um, it brings about economic prosperity, it brings about self-awareness, it brings about an identity uh, that you cannot have without that education. Uh, there are certain practical things that come along with, with education and that's the, the comfort uh, that you can have with a, a, a good career. I'm constantly impressed with the communities uh, dedication to ed education for those reasons. But I also, as an architect, I think, as, as you heard, I'm an architect, and uh, so that is what I do during uh, the day when I'm not doing my volunteer job as a mayor. And as an, as an architect, uh, I get to balance a lot of things, um, and one of those is the, uh, the engineering and the, the science side, which I enjoy immensely, but also the aesthetic and the creative side. And uh, education brings about creativity that is impossible to have without ed that education. So um, it empowers our young people as well, something that they, once they get education, um, people with education are in better health 
this is something that we don't always take um, that we take for granted. But uh, it, it may not apply so much here in our, in our wonderful country. But um, a child whose mother is educated and literate is 50% more likely to survive than um, that a child whose mother is not. Um, we take for granted what education does for us in society. And uh, uh, the, the, you all are not taking it for granted. That is important. You're taking it seriously and working towards a real solution for that. Um, the other thing that I like to remind people, and I, I think this is especially important here, is that education is um, the antithesis of prejudice and discrimination. And that is something that uh, we can stamp out uh, with education. And uh, it is something that um, I would like to say that in our country and in our community that we don't have uh, discrimination and prejudice. I do think that we have done a good job with that, but it is still exists. And the best way to eliminate that is with education. So uh, those are important things. I, uh, I am very proud of uh, this community for dedicating uh, that uh, efforts towards bringing this wonderful facility. And by the way, I think it's also incredibly uh, uh, nice that it is not a education facility alone. It is, it is essentially building that community there. Um, as an architect, I also appreciate that. That is not uh, a small thing. I think creating that immediate community around the school is, is a critical element, and I think it's something we far, far too often uh, don't do. So thank you for that as well. I thought I'd take just a moment um, while I was here, uh, since this wonderful school is going into our great city of Carrollton, uh, to take just a moment to tell you a few highlights about Carrollton. I'm very proud of our city, and we're doing very well uh, here in Carrollton. But we, uh, our budget, we've had five tax rate decreases over the last five years. Um, I think that's important because that helps our citizens to be able to uh, afford to live here properly. We have a very strong fiscal um, uh, budget. We economically, I think this is also interesting, we have uh, $14 billion in, in valuations of businesses in Carrollton. We have over 14,000 businesses in Carrollton. That is something that when I, before I was mayor, I didn't know, and I'm very proud of that, that we have so many small businesses. And let me tell you, many of those businesses are ones that come from this community right here. And we appreciate that very much. Yes, thank you. So home values are up over 13% in one year. That is incredible, too. Wages are up over 5% uh, in the last two years. So wage stagnation has not been a problem. We, are, we have a 96% 96, 96 occupancy rate in our centers, uh, retail and otherwise office centers here in the Carrollton, which is in incredibly high. Um, we have a program that I think many of you know, um, our uh, executive director of public safety, Rex Redden, our former police chief. Um, he has uh, taken it upon himself to start a safety and security program for our faith-based institutions here in Carrollton. And that is actually, he started that a little over a year ago. I've encouraged him and I'm very proud of how he's done that. Brings our faith-based organizations together to ensure the safety and the security of our, of our uh, members in each one of those congregations. And that is still happening today. Those are happening um, every week. And uh, it is good to see the faith-based organizations coming together to ensure that we have a safe city. I've also uh, started a mayor's commission on safety, and that's largely focused on our children and our children in our schools. So it will be focused on this school as well. I'm extremely excited to be able to focus on another school and being, making sure that we keep these children safe in that school. So um, we have a cotton belt train that is going to be coming right through um, Carrollton in the next three years. It'll go right through downtown Carrollton. And uh, that is going to bring new prosperity to the city as well. You'll be able to get that to the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport directly on that train. And uh, we have a um, new development that we are working on right at the Trinity Mills uh, station uh, at I-35 and uh, the George Bush just down the road. That is going to be a Class A mixed-use development that will help this entire area. It's going to be very close to where your school is going to be and where the, uh, the mosque is. It's going to work. It's going to help to build uh, even more value around this community. So I appreciate that so much. 
I, uh, I do want to thank uh, Dr. Zakari for your comments so much about the, uh, the building of this great country and what a great job you all are doing in that regard as well. Um, I don't want to overlook uh, what this country uh, stands for and the ability for you all to express your religion freely and I stand right firmly behind you in, in that regard all the time. Mr. Joint, I also want to thank you so much for your comments about the community um, and, and what we've been able to do and keeping a community that is strong is important to all of us and uh, we want to continue to keep that strength. I am here um, as your mayor um, and I'm here to support you in whatever ways I can. So thank you again so much for everything that you do. Thank you for inviting me again. Thank you to our distinguished guests and God bless you. Mayor, for your time, your comment, and your outstanding support to our community. We are looking forward to working with you. We're side by side with you, and hope you can bring us some more education with your wisdom to help this community to grow in a very prosperous way to the wonderful city of Carrot. Thank you again. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much. And uh, before we start the, uh, the rail part, which is the fundraising, I did forget one of the very distinguished guests we have on the stage is Mr. Abid Malik on my right side, the president of Pakistan Society of North Texas. Mr. Abid Malik, you know, if he can raise the hands, everybody see Abid Malik, can you raise your hand? Thank you, sir. I raise you. Thank you. On the left side, and I do have some very good people because before we start, I do have Mr. Ashwag Ahmed. Everybody knows him, one of the very successful business entrepreneurs of this area. Ashwag, thank you very much. He's been with us for a long, long time. And everyone on the right side and left side, you know everyone. So we are, without any further delay, we are going to start the fundraising. If Mr. Mayor, I know he has to go. He did have some commitments. I will request, you know, please, I mean, I mean, go ahead and, and uh, the farewell and see off Mr. Mayor, and then definitely we will, we will start the fundraising. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, sir.